The auto thrust on this aircraft is another function, another branch of the flight management and guidance system. Just like the autopilot is able to give us input into the vertical and lateral guidance of the aircraft, the auto thrust gives commands to the engine for speed and power. The auto thrust system functions together with the flight management and guidance system. It includes two independent auto thrust channels within the auto thrust system, one dedicated for each flight management and guidance computer. Each one of these are able to command both engines through their FADIC to give the power required. But they work on a master-slave concept. So when you engage Autopilot 1, for example, you are indeed also using flight management and guidance computer number one, and that computer will then be the one giving through auto thrust channel number one commands to that FADIC and both the engines. The auto thrust works independently of whether or not the autopilot or the flight directors are engaged or not. The auto thrust is something we fly with even when we do manual hands-on flying. In order for you to arm and also activate the auto thrust, the thrust levers must be placed into the active range. That is anything above idle. Arming the auto thrust is first done by pushing the auto thrust push button right here and the green light will illuminate. But whether or not the auto thrust is in armed, active or indeed disconnected mode will depend on the position of the thrust levers. In the presentation on the engines, we talk about the auto thrust system, and we talked about it also in the APPI briefing. So activating the auto thrust is something that actually happens after we take off. When we power up the engines and we come out, the auto thrust system is off. It works with manual thrust, we taxi out, and then as we take off and we apply full power for takeoff, we're moving the thrust lever from its position in idle all the way to either MCT or toga power. Both of these are outside the active range for the auto thrust. Remember, the auto thrust is where it commands the inputs to the engines automatically. That means right now we have manual thrust. If we bring it up a little bit closer, we can actually see here on the FMA for takeoff, if I read it from left to right, manual flex 56 SRS runway and auto thrust blue. A blue mode means that it is armed. The engaged modes right here would be the ones that are on top that are in boxes. And it tells me right now with the auto thrust in blue that while I have set the power to the MCT Flex D10, which is right there, it is outside the active range for the auto thrust. When the auto thrust becomes active, that indication right there will change from blue to white. And that happens during the takeoff when I take my thrust levers at thrust reduction altitude and pull them back to the climb detent. When I pull them back to the climb detent, the auto thrust goes from being armed to being active. And it is now the flight management and guidance system that gives commands to the engines through the FADIC. But for that auto thrust to become active, the thrust levers must be placed into the active range. And the active range is above idle for two engines up to climb, and for one engine above idle up to MCT. With two engines operating, it will only be active in this range. So if I place the thrust lever above, it will say auto thrust is now armed, it is not active, you have manual thrust. Once you put it back to that particular active range, then the auto thrust speed column right here, the auto thrust mode will go from thrust mode to speed mode in this case. The thrust lever should be operated simultaneously and be placed into the active range as soon as we reduce power at thrust reduction altitude after takeoff. They will stay in that active range and the auto thrust will do all the power settings during the climb, cruise and descent. Even during the approach, the auto thrust allows the aircraft to decelerate through the activation of the approach phase and selecting the different configurations for flaps and slats. In fact, we don't touch the thrust levers, we don't take the auto thrust off the active mode here 
until we take the power and reduce it back to idle during the flare. In this entire time, the thrust levers have stayed here in the active range, in the active detent for climb for two engines, and the auto thrust system has worked through the flight management and guidance system. The thrust lever quadrant right here divides this thrust lever positioning into four sections divided by five detents. A detent is a stop where the thrust levers, when you move them, goes into a little bit of a hard click, a little bit more force, and you can move it to the next one, but it stops in that position. When the auto thrust is working, the thrust levers dictate the upper limit for what the auto thrust can use. And it means putting them into climb gives the auto thrust system the maximum authority. But if you place the thrust levers below climb, you will get a prompt saying thrust limited because you have now told the auto thrust you can only use them until this particular point. And that's not normal practice. If you place one position lever different from the other and it's not a single engine scenario, you will get a prompt the same lever asymmetrical. Both of these are not common practice, so the prompt should tell you that something is not set correctly. Disconnecting the auto thrust is done in two steps, and this is important when it comes to handling the aircraft. We talked about it in the PPI briefing that disconnecting the auto thrust is done by taking the thrust levers and first placing them back to the actual power commanded at that point on the engines, and that can be found by looking at the engine warning display. You see the little blue donut here. That is the thrust lever angle, and placing that at the green active line for the engine means that you have now the thrust lever position that equates to the actual engine power. Because remember, the engine thrust levers do not move when the auto thrust is commanding different thrust settings. It stays in the same detent, the maximum authority. And at any given time, you will have that or less power. And chances are you're going to have less power. So if you disconnect it wrong, it will come with a massive surge in power, something that is not desirable or correct handling. Placing the thrust levers back to match the power in the engine and then using the disconnect push button on the thrust levers right here, disconnect, you allow the manual thrust to be equal to the actual power at that time. And from there, you can add or remove power as needed. Simply placing the thrust levers above the climb detent of a one engine MCT will just revert the auto thrust from the active into the armed mode. Do not disengage the auto thrust by pushing the auto thrust push button up here. It comes with a warning and a thrust lock situation where the thrust is now locked in that position until the pilot takes manual control by the thrust levers and disconnects it up here. This is not common practice and this is not something you should be doing either you're training or on the line. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.